Hey guys, Samro here, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode, you may remember, we won the bird flying contest, or Quidditch, whatever you want to call it. Got the bird statuette and got- Gart, yes, we Gart to do it, no. We got, even, to participate in the ritual with Zelda, and, uh, she got my hopes up that she was about to kiss me, and instead she's gonna push me off the edge of the goddess statue. Right now. <laughs> Okay. Down we go! And you gotta aim right for the center! On our first try, awesome. <sighs> that was perfect! You're amazing, Samro! Ha ha ha. Ah, shucks. <laughs> you know, Samro, seeing as how you won today, and with the weather being so nice, you think maybe you'd like to, you know, go fly around the clouds together? Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this is the one Zelda game where Zelda and Link have anything close to a romantic relationship. I mean, you know, they never kiss or anything, but... You know, this is as good as, it's, as it gets. Sabro! Hey, Sabro! Also, the, one of the few games where you actually care about Zelda as a character. I mean, you certainly don't... You hardly ever see her in the first Zelda game. Today was amazing! Watching you win the race and performing the ritual together... I'll always remember this. It really was wonderful. <laughs> you know, Samro? There's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. It's that she likes him, it's that she likes- Oh, and of course that gets erupt interrupted. What is that? Whoa. Uh oh. Um. What's going on? There's a giant tornado. That's what's going on. Ah, Sabro! No, 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 I am waiting for you. The time has come for you to awaken. You are vital to a mission of great importance. Samro. Uh, hey, flying person, could you save me before I fall to my death? Wait a minute, Zelda, how'd you get the sailcloth back? Oh, no, 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 don't eat her! Da! Ah, Pinecone! Oh. Heh <laughs> just a dream. Right? Ah, you're awake. Oh. When your Loftwing carried you back, you were limp and unconscious. I feared the worst. Ah, oh, so it wasn't a dream. Well then. Fortunately, you don't appear to have any serious injuries. For that much, we can be grateful. Hmm. Samru. Where's Zelda? She was with you, was she not? What has happened to my daughter? Uh, well, what happened was- Oh my god, Link is actually speaking! I mean, sure, in other Zelda games there's like, you know, the yes and no options that imply that he speaks, but this is the first time he's like, had animation of speaking in the cutscene. A black tornado, you say? Hmm. That was no ordinary storm. 
That actually was kind of greenish, to tell you the truth. <laughs> you must not push yourself. You are still recovering. Tell me, when you saw Zelda today, did anything about her seem... off? Well, she fell off of her loft wing. I see. She was talking about the surface, then. And you've been having dreams about a great mission. How interesting. I'm sorry, I was lost in thought there for a moment. It's all very strange, but I doubt there's much of a connection between these things. I'm concerned for Zelda, but so long as she's with her Loftwing, I'm sure she'll be fine. Either way, Daybreak has yet to arrive. It would be very difficult to spot one girl and a bird in the dark of night. It would also be very dangerous. Rest now, Samro. Zelda's going to be fine. She's out there alive. I know it. Hmm. Yeah, let's hope so. Pretty far fall through the cloud barrier. Wait, what? Um. Interesting. And we're already seven minutes into the episode, Jesus. Uh, let's see. Rupee? Yep, yep, just like I said in episode one. Every... After being away for a while, uh, it'll respawn magically. Okay, so let's see what's on the other side. Oh. Okay, I must have hit my head, uh, <laughs> after that black tornado hit me, because... I swear I'm seeing... I'm seeing things. Okay, I'm just gonna go back into my room and pretend I didn't see that. Okay, I'm gonna go out there again, and this time I'll be sane, and it will not be there, right? She won't be there, she's still there. Um, hello? Excuse me? Um... Um, hello? I've been seeing you in my dreams. Don't take that the wrong way. Okay, I'm... <laughs> Maybe I'm still dreaming. If that's the case, let's just play along. Let's just play along for now. Um... Hmm. Hello? Stamina fruit. Stamina fruit looks pretty disgusting to eat. And again, it's probably like, um, sports drinks that don't, in my experience anyway, don't taste the best. Aw, an adorable little cat, just like Mia. Hello, kitty. Ah! Oh, get back, get back, get back! Yeah, after a couple of hits, uh... Oh my god, you savage little monster. Okay, you're cute, but I'm afraid I have- Oh god, I'm afraid I have no choice. Oh my god, that's not what I meant! <laughs> Watch your footing out there. In the dark, you never know when you might take a wrong step off a ledge. Oh, and don't let me catch you going around flying at night. Only trained knights such as myself should be doing that. You take care now. Okay, uh, kill this. You got a red rupee. It's worth 20 rupees. Don't spend it all in one place. Uh, except you probably do spend it all in one place. Um... Alright. 
Well, I guess we eliminated the cat problem. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's there? Because, like, if, if I did successfully throw that cat off the ledge without going off myself, um, those little, like, mini cats do actually, can they can fly with their ears, actually. So if you throw one off the edge, they'll just fly back. Meh, I'll get a chance to show that in a, another episode. Go. Eh. Okay, we have just enough to get over. Oh, keys. Pretty stupid that even the most basic sword doesn't doesn't kill the keys in one hit, but oh well. Ah! Hopefully that wasn't a monster claw, otherwise I would have liked to have gotten that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, trick from Majora's Mask still works. Of rolling off the edge and it extends you further. Actually, I think it was also possible in Ocarina of Time, wasn't it? Mm. But it was most recognizable in Majora's Mask. Okay, get over here! Eh. Ah, nowhere to run now! Except there, okay. Well, I guess there's no catching her now. Okay. Then we made our way back here to the statue of the goddess. So, let's run on in. Oh, <gasps> wow. Already? Okay, it's not the same sword I'm thinking of. At least doesn't look the same. The one chosen by my creator. I have been waiting for you. You will play a role in a great destiny. According to your social customs, I should provide you with my personal designation. Phi is the name I was given. I was created for a single purpose, long before the recorded memory of your people. I must aid you in fulfilling the great destiny that is your burden to carry. Come, Sanro, you must take up this sword. As the one chosen by my creator, it is your destiny. Uh... The strange dreams troubling your sleep, my sudden appearance, uncertainty surrounding the fate of one you hold dear. Under the circumstances, it is only logical that you would exhibit some apprehension. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty logical. To minimize your uncertainty, allow me to share some information. My projections indicate that this information has a high probability of altering your current emotional state. The one you seek, Honorable Zelda, is still alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say that has a high probability of altering my emotional state. And this spirit maiden, the one you call Zelda, is another chosen one, fated to be part of the same great mission. Therefore, should you wish to meet with your friend, I highly recommend you take up this sword before you and set out to search for her. Does that information invigorate you? Are you ready to accept this sword? Hell yeah, I am. Give it to me. It seems that further persuasive measures will not be required. Yeah, yeah, they, they won't. Uh, I'm pretty convinced. In the name of my creator, draw the sword and raise it skyward. Oh. 
All right, raise it skyward. Hence the name of the game, Skyward Sword. <laughs> you got the Goddess Sword. This mysterious sword is bathed in divine light. Take a look at that. Recognition complete, Master. Samro, my master. Master, huh? Like the sound of that. Samro! Oh, I've had my suspicions, but until now I wasn't sure. Yet here we are in the Chamber of the Sword. The very place where it was foretold the youth of legend would one day appear. It is said that this place was left to our people by the goddess herself. The very knowledge of this room's existence is a secret passed down to a select few each de generation, not decoration, what the hell? <laughs> Along with a handful of words. When the light of the goddess's sword shines bright, the great apocalypse will wake from its long slumber. Do not fear, for it is then that a youth guided by my hand shall reveal himself in a place most sacred. It started days ago, the sword that I've kept secret all these years. It began to give off a faint, otherworldly light. <laughs> At first, I was sure I was seeing things, here alone with the sword. There was simply no other explanation. I never dreamed the prophecy of legend would come to pass in my lifetime. Who the hell is she? The words I have sworn to keep secret are coming true before my eyes. The youth will be guided by one born of the blade. One who is a youthful in likeness, yet wise with knowledge immeasurable. Ah yes, the oral tradition, one of the least reliable methods of information, retention, and transmission. It appears that critical sections of the passage have been lost over the generations. Oh. The youth who draws forth the guiding sword shall be known as the goddess's chosen hero and it is he who possesses an unbreakable spirit. He shall be burdened with the task of abolishing the shadow of Apocalypse from the land. Such is his destiny. With the spirit of the blade at his side, he shall soar over the clouds and plummet below. And united with the spirit maiden, shall bring forth a piercing light that resurrects the land. <laughs> Some of Father's old texts talk about a place called the Surface. The old tales describe a whole world below, far more vast than Skyloft. Master, you must embark on a great journey beneath the clouds to the vast realm of the surface. It is only through this journey that you can fulfill the mission set before you by my creator, the Goddess. It is also the only method available for you to reunite with the Spirit Maiden, Honorable Zelda. This is no easy task, Samro. The world below is a forsaken place, and to reach it, you must pierce through the cloud barrier below. In living memory, no one has ever done this. That is about to change. This tablet will illuminate a path through the clouds to the land below. Take it, and place it within the altar behind me. 
You got the Emerald Tablet. The weathered surface of this heavy stone tablet feels very old. All right. Master, the first thing you must do is hit the crest sitting in this room with a skyward strike. These blasts are formed of pure energy that charges within your blade when you lift it skyward. Once you have charged your blade, face the crest and swing your sword to send out a powerful skyward strike. Alright. Whoa, wait! Where did I get that sheath? Where'd the other sword go? Oh well, not important. <laughs> Do 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 do. All right, place in the tablet. And it will open. Now this, this is when the game actually starts getting fun. <laughs> After a long tutorial section. I mean, you know, it, you know, the tutorial section, you know, doing the race and stuff is pretty fun, but, you know, this is where, like, the game, the journey, truly begins. Master Samro, it is done. Until now, a cloud barrier created by the goddess has separated the world you know from the one below. The tablet you placed in the altar has opened a small rift in the barrier. You can use it to travel through the clouds to the realm below. I have recognized you as my master, and so it is my duty to follow you wherever you may go. I reside within your sword and will accompany you in your travels. Press down to summon me whenever you require my assistance. Alright then, let's do it! Samro, listen a moment. The nature of the great apocalypse mentioned in the old texts is a complete mystery to me. But whatever it turns out to be, it seems that both you and Zelda have big roles to play in the destiny of this land. Just think, if what this Fi says is true, Zelda is alive. Alive and no doubt coming to terms with whatever it is the goddess has in store for her. Should you heed the call of destiny, I don't know what dangers you may have to face, Samro, especially down there. But if you decided to brave the unknown, please, find my daughter and bring her back to me. What we've seen here today defies explanation, but it is only the start of your journey. Please, see it through and prove the legends true! Hell yeah! Let's do it! You do your people proud, Samro. Dawn is drawing near. It has been a long night for both of us, hasn't it? How can you tell that Dawn is drawing near? There's no windows in this place. Just torches. You have a great journey before you, Samro. And those clothes, they don't look up to the task. The uniform you were to receive for winning the race should be ready by now. A sturdy uniform like that will prove much more suitable for a long journey. You'd better change before you go. Agreed. Oh my goodness, 24 minutes, jeez. Almost 25. Well, this was to be quite a long episode, but you know. Eh, yeah, I don't think, I think, you know, because of the cutscene, I don't think I should split it in half. So, you know what? I think that'd be a good place as any to end the episode for today. So until next time, uh, thank you for watching this episode all the way through, and uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Later.